God has uniquely made each one of us a masterpiece, individually made in God's image and filled with dignity, value, and worth. But God did not just make us to be a work of art or something to float passively by in the world. God called each one of us to participate and bring about restoration to the world through creation within our communities, in our relationships with our friends and neighbors both near and far. Before we went to Kentucky, God was at work preparing our opportunities for us to be part of ASP's great works. ASP staff went out and talked to families, setting the course of events for um, our week in McGoffin County. First, we will introduce all the teams and then hear the experiences of four of our work crews as they tried to live out, create, and serve. So we were crew two. Um, the only people here are Liv O'Dell, Dustin Pence, um, myself, Leah Wallace, and we also had Karen Ranny, John Storsfed, Galen Marfell, and Dusty Fry. Um, we worked at a house with a homeowner, Roxy, and her three sons, um, who were between 11 and 10, and, oh, and the 11 year olds were twins. And we worked on flooring. Um, we tore up the old floor and put a new one down, and we took out the wall paneling and added insulation. Good morning. Um, we're Team 3, better known, known as the Sunshine Crew. My name is Kathy Summers. I served with Matt Hart, Leah Courtney, Jacob Lyons, Will Katsinas, and we have two missing people, Amy Jansen was with us and Marty Weber. Um, this week we worked for an elderly couple, although I think that's all in perspective. <laughs> and. Um, we built a wheelchair ramp for a delightful couple. Um, it was 32 feet long, the our part of it, but it seemed much longer as we took up extra boards and put them back down. So we had a wonderful week. Good morning, I'm Dave Reihert. Um, I served with Cheryl, uh, Callie Miller, Justin Cheney, um, Luke Greaser, and um, also Ben Parsons was with us, and Olivia DeVries. And uh, we worked on a bathroom, replaced a bathroom floor, a laundry room floor, uh, rebuilt a porch and the stairs with it, and also worked on underpinning. Good morning. Uh, my name is John Beck. I was on Team 6 uh, along with uh, Belinda Courtney and Claire Sherrick and Dan Briggs, Samantha Smith and Gabby Greaser and not with us this morning is Jacob Broga. Uh, so we were assigned the name Karsdorp by the center staff and if you're wondering what a Karsdorp is, I didn't know either. It apparently is a Dutch soccer player, so if any of you know that, get some bonus points. But uh, what our job was, we worked with a, we worked for a 33-year-old man and his three-year-old son, uh, and his son quickly became, although he started off the, the week real slowly in terms of being friendly to us, quickly became Gabby's best friend, and she'll, she'll tell you about more about that later. But, but uh, at any rate, we were doing... Uh, we were doing drywall, we were finishing drywall joints, drywall that had already been installed, we finished drywall joints, taped and, and sanded, and then we also built a, uh, a small porch on the front of the house for uh, this man and his son. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chloe Pence, and this is my fourth year on ASP. I was on crew one with Dave Wolf. Brian Vincent, Becky Michael, Gabe Lyons, Tori Young, and Isaiah Elts. Our homeowners were Rain and Ryan. They had three kids, Anthony, who was three, Derek, who was almost two, and Kaysen, who's only two months. They also had the world's friendliest dog, Roscoe. And on Monday morning, we pulled up and knocked on the door. We were greeted by Rain and Roscoe. Rain invited us in, and we talked to her for a while, and then started to work. We started digging holes that would later become a porch. We cleaned the toys out of the playroom. Then at lunchtime, we started to make a place to sit in the shade by our van. And Ryan came out and told us we had to come inside for lunch. We went inside to be greeted by the whole family. During lunch, we talked to the family, and the whole family was so welcoming. 
After lunch, some of our crew went back to work, while others stayed and talked to the family. By the end of Monday, the kids, the kids had all warmed up and wanted us to play with them. The rest of the week, we would work in the morning, sit and talk to the family during lunch, and then in the afternoon, a few of us would work while others would just talk to the family. Friday came and the one porch was finished, and this was their safe second exit for their home. The playroom had new subflooring, a new window, and new drywall. They started repairing the steps on the other porch, and Anthony went outside to watch. He tried to help by doing whatever he could. And so finally, when we were saying our goodbyes, Anthony kept saying bye, like he would see us tomorrow. He gave everyone a hug, and Rain kept saying how much she would miss us. This family was the most welcoming homeowners I've ever had. They showed us how welcoming you can really be, even if you don't know anyone. They had never met us, yet they talked to us like we were their best friends. They showed us how grateful you should be, even for the smallest things in life. This was my best year on ASP because our homeowners were so welcoming. I'm Kelly Evans. I was a part of Crew 4, otherwise known as How Now Brown Cow. Uh, we were made up of me, Anna Floodstrom, Ben Storsved, Ben Carnahan, Steve Greaser, Todd Courtney, and Dodie Phipps. Our homeowner was Jewel, a mom living with her two adult children, Brandy and Dwayne. Before arriving at the work site on the first day, we were told that Jewel was shy, so we figured that we would have to get to know her one on one. Once we got there, Brandy was the only one home. She was very kind and welcoming, but she was leaving for work as soon as we got there. Later that day, Jewel came home and said hi to us. She was quiet and only talked to us for a little while. We were just glad to meet her for the first time. After deciding all of what needed to be done, we split up into above ground and below ground. Fully protected in hilarious full body white suits, Todd and both Bens were brave enough to dive under the house, even though there was barely enough room for all of them under there. It was almost like an obstacle course, course with so many things they weren't allowed to touch or accidentally bump into. Their job under the house was putting up insulation, which Anna supplied to them. For the first half of the week, they shouted orders at her for more insulation and staples. She then had the very important job of cleaning up the old insulation that was being removed from under the house. Steve worked all around the house, but stayed safely above ground. He discovered that an air conditioning unit had just been sitting in an opening with only t-shirts surrounding it, so he spent a long time making it way more secure by adding wood blocks around it to replace the t-shirts. He also worked on two small doors on the outside of the house, with one leading under the house and one to a water heater. I was in charge of J-channeling, which is the trimming that goes around windows and doors for the foam boards and later the siding to fit into. Dodie helped everyone. She was always there to hold a ladder, hand you tools, or to inform you that you needed a water break as soon as possible that you, so that you wouldn't get dehydrated. When we did take water breaks or lunch breaks and everyone finally got out from under the house, we sat in the most perfect spot for relaxing. Our chairs and overturned buckets were placed in a nice shady spot with no noise and just an overwhelming sense of calmness. Lunchtime was when we had some of our best discussions. One thing we talked about was something Anna brought up. Even though we are a group of Christians, we were helping anyone, and even if they weren't Christians, they appreciated it. On the last day, I was taking a water break while everyone else was working. We still hadn't gotten to know Jewel very well, and she was always inside, but I caught her opening the back door a little bit and poking her head outside to see what was going on. She looked around and smiled. This moment really showed me how much she appreciated what we were doing. One of the main reasons we didn't see Jewel very much started out with some shocking news we got on Tuesday. There was a note on the door from Brandy saying that she had taken her mom to the hospital. That was all it said, so we were worried. We went to work that day really concerned and had no idea what was going on with Jewel. We were so relieved the next day to read a second note from Brandy, which said that Jewel had gone to the hospital for emergency back surgery, but was already recovering and in therapy. On Thursday, Dodie and I went inside to leave Jewel a card and were surprised to see her at home, resting on the couch. She told us that she had chose to come home and have a therapist help her there instead of staying at the hospital for 14 more days. Our crew was impressed at her toughness and the fact that she basically shrugged off that she had just been in the hospital. My favorite moments from the trip were when our whole tr crew were working together. For the second half of the week, most of us worked together to put up the foam boards. All of us had gotten the hang of it pretty quickly, and we all worked together perfectly. Ben Carnahan and Anna would measure and cut the pieces, and then all of us would nail them up against the house. This could get frustrating occasionally, because way more than half of the time we were nailing the foam into nothing and would have to start somewhere else. Even with this happening and what felt like hundreds of wasps everywhere, the crew stayed incredibly positive for not only this project, but for the whole week. 
I got to know everyone so much better, and I'm so glad this week turned out to be exactly how it was. Hi, my name is Rachel Courtney, and this was my fourth and final year going on ASP as a youth. I couldn't have asked for a better crew and homeowner. My crew members were Chris Kane, John Summers, Grant Thomas, Lena Flores, Trevor Parton, Mary Woods, and Harry Bodine. Our homeowner's name was Wanda. Her two great granddaughters lived with her, and the Sunday when Lena first met Wanda on the home visit, she gave her a big hug and thanked her before we even started working. This was our first insight to the kind of open and loving person that Wanda was. Wanda's great granddaughters, McKinley and Kaylee, were four and six. They were always there to keep us company if we needed something to do, someone to talk to, or cuddle with. There was a trampoline at their house, and everyone took turns learning how to do flips, or playing popcorn, or playing horsey with Kinley. She loved all the attention. Kaylee was a tomboy and made sure that everyone knew that one day she was going to be a rapper and make it big. She was really good at making sure Kinley was having a good time, but never let a moment pass to tease her little sister, which reminded me a lot of my own two younger sisters. Our main projects for the week would be taking down and replacing the ceiling above the kitchen and TV room, finishing the ceiling in the bathroom, and finishing up trim around the top perimeter of the rooms. All of these were great projects for a crew with only one member taller than six foot. <laughs> Our crew really became comfortable with each other by the end of the week. Chris was always there for everyone and always worked way longer than anyone else. She didn't ever feel that, she had done, that what she had done was enough and didn't think that her work was ever good enough, which kept her standards for our whole project very high. John was the most patient adult leader I'd ever worked with. It wasn't uncommon for John's name to be called many times in a 10 second time frame, but that didn't stop him from being able to put down what he was trying to finish and give us each his undivided attention. Not to mention, he was very good at sweating through shirts, if that counts as something you can be good at. <laughs> Grant was always willing to try new things. He was very good at keeping the atmosphere light, and we all loved that he was able to bring his guitar and play at evening gatherings and play for Wanda. Lena was the wise one of our crew. She worked incredibly hard and was always thinking things through to make sure that what we were doing was the right thing. Trevor was the tall one and helped a lot to hold the ceiling in place as he stood on the ground. The rest of us were struggling to hold it either with some T-squares or balancing on buckets. Mary was a, lot of fun to be, was a lot of fun to be with on the crew. If she wasn't reminding me that her team Centennial beat my team Central in girls soccer this past spring, she was busy helping put up trim and playing with Kinley and Kaylee. Harry also worked on the trim and played with the girls. The girls loved to jump with and on Harry as he bounced on the trampoline. As Harry, short for Harrison, we assumed, and Mary worked together for most of the week, they quickly adopted the team name Marison. Together, and with the guidance of Chris, Marison put Trim in a whole bedroom and bathroom, doing most of the work by themselves by the end. A love for music was one of the biggest things that we all had in common with Wanda. One afternoon, Grant got out his guitar. Wanda was singing her heart out for the whole afternoon to the songs Grant was playing. She ended up getting us all to sing with her from her hymnal that she'd had for her whole life. We all somewhat recognized, Will the Circle Be Unbroken, and sang all four verses twice that afternoon, and again at the picnic with the rest of the crews and their families. The lyrics to this song specifically stuck to me as we talked about the poverty and the cycle that gener generationally these families go through. At the center, the staff encouraged us to really think about the kinds of situations our families were in. We saw firsthand that many of them lived near or with generations of family members. There isn't really a way to break the circle when you can't find jobs that pay well and have good hours when they dropped out of school to work to provide for their families. Wanda gave us all that she could. On Monday, as we worked to remove the ceiling right above Wanda's kitchen and TV room, Wanda was cooking a soup that smelled amazing. At lunchtime, we all sat on her porch eating our peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and she walked out and asked who wanted to get soup first. Although it could have been the exhaustion we were all feeling that made the soup taste so good, we realized that it must have been some of the best soup we had ever tasted. She offered cold drinks to us, she kept the cats and dogs in another room so that we could work without them in our way, and even went swimming with the girls to keep them out of the house. On the last day we were at her house, we were all cleaning up, and she handed her hymnal to me. I wasn't sure why, and she explained that it was mine to keep so that I could learn all of the hymns that have a special place in her heart. In the back she wrote her phone number and address so that we could keep in touch, and once I learned all of the songs in the hymnal, that I could call her up and we could sing together on the phone. Before we left, we had to put the ceiling back together and we had decided as a group that the gift we would get for Wanda would be a new ceiling fan that would help brighten up her room. 
As Lena pulled the string to turn the light on, Wanda was almost in shock and she stood there staring at the light. She started crying and said that before we had put the lights back up, we had brought a new light into her life, and this light would be the reminder of the love and fellowship that we had brought with us for the week. There wasn't really one specific thing that I learned from this week, but many different things. I was overjoyed to be able to work with Wanda as she reminded me how important having a strong faith is and that she couldn't have gone through the things that she had gone through if it weren't for her faith. I'm thankful that my church has been going to help families like Wanda and the girls for now 31 years, and I hope that we can keep sending youth for many more years down the road. Thank you. I was on a group with Lee Bissell, Deb Jansen, Isaac Heaton, Sienna Stolte, Kate Storsved, and Nellie Haig. My name is Lauren, by the way. Hi. Our site was called Bob Ra Medina, and it was a double crew with a crew from the other church. On most trips, we learn a little about the site we'll be on and the family we're helping on Saturday night at Centenary Church. This year, however, we got into our crew and knew absolutely nothing about the work we would be doing or the family we would be helping. The first we heard about our site was on Sunday night after the home visits. Lee and Nellie came back, and all they had to say was that it was going to be a lot of work and that it, there was a lot of dirt and mud. Lee told us that this trailer was in worse condition than any he had seen in years. This news, I think, motivated us to work really hard. When we got there the next day, our homeowner wasn't there, but we got to work right away, our crew working on tearing down an old and rotten addition in the back. Doing this, we soon discovered that our crew worked very well together and got along great. We were able to get pretty much all of it taken down in just the first day and still work inside too. During that day, we also met our homeowner, Charles, and his four dogs. He was very nice and would even help out with the work whenever he could. His dogs were nice for the most part. Whenever we moved from place to place outside, they would bark to their heart's content, but there was one named Penny who was really sweet and would come up and let you pet her all the time. Overall, it was just nice to have so many dogs on the site when you're away from home missing your own dog. When people would ask me what we were doing on our site, I would simply say everything, because there really was some of everything going on there. Once we finished tearing down the addition, we worked on restructuring the walls because they were in really bad shape and not very stable. Then we tore up the floor in the bathroom and bedroom because it was rotting and unsturdy. Then we put insulation and new flooring. Meanwhile, the other crew was working on getting the electric up and running and putting drywall in the other room. Then we, we all worked on putting underpinning around the front and sides of the trailer. Now, for those of you who don't know, Lee is a master at this stuff, but his methods can be unorthodox at times. <laughs> to me, it was really funny to see the staff react to how he was doing things. For example, when the staff came and Lee explained casually that he was holding up the side of the trailer with a car jack, which made Sydney freak out saying, you know those are for cars, right? Or the time when the staff came into the back room to see that Lee had removed three walls and put them aside to work on the floor, which they weren't too thrilled about, to put things lightly. We did put the walls back, just so you know. <laughs> Overall, though, it was a great week, and all of the kids in our crew got really close by the end of the work week. That's one of the really special things about this trip, in my opinion. You get put in a group with people that you know, but would never really associate yourself with. But by the end of the week, you've become good friends and have made great memories. Especially this year. I feel like our crew just kind of clicked, and we had a great time with a lot of laughs and inside jokes. Another really special thing about this year was seeing that what we were able to accomplish in just five short days. I mean, when we got there, we saw the amount of work we had to do uh, in, five, in week five out of seven, I might add. It seemed like an impossible task. But when we finished working on Friday and saw all that we had been able to get done, it was so encouraging. We were by no means finished, but we know that the next group that came to come and look at that site would not see it nearly in the same way that we did at first, and that's really special. I feel like this year, more than any other in my experience, we really made a difference. When you leave this place today, we challenge you to speak. To speak up for what you believe is right. To speak up for what is not easy. We challenge you to listen. We challenge you to let yourself fail. Only to raise yourself to new levels of success. We challenge you to be unafraid to talk about Jesus. We challenge you to stop trying to impress others. And start trying to impress God. We challenge you to do the unpopular thing. We challenge you to be a rebel. We challenge you to be unabashed in affection. We challenge you to humble yourself. We challenge you to allow yourself to be humbled. 
We challenge you to avoid the path of least resistance. We challenge you not to await opportunity, but to find purpose and mission. To chart a course that your potential demands. We challenge you to find joy despite difficult circumstances. We challenge you to believe without seeing. We challenge you to respond with grace. We challenge you to live life better than you ever have before. Go into the world today with God's grace.